Welcome to the home of the blessed people. Raising a people of power and purpose with a passion for Jesus. Enjoy an atmosphere of God's presence. A place of love and excellence. A place to be, a place to belong, and a place to become. This is Royal House. We have a reason to rejoice this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Lord, clap your hands. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our God, he continues to be faithful. Our God continues to be good. Our God continues to be merciful. And I just want you to lift your hands and just begin to worship him. Our God has been so faithful to us. His love for us was so great that he sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. Because of what he has done, we have the power inside of us. That same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that your thoughts for us are of good and not of evil. To give us an expected end. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus.
to be in God's presence this morning. I'd like you to shout hallelujah to take your seat this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're welcome this morning to Royal House, the home of the blessed people, where lives are changed and destinies are transformed. Royal House is a church that is passionate about our vision. And what is our vision? We're a church that is out to raise a people of power, of purpose, and a passion for Jesus. We are passionate about the atmosphere of God's presence through the word, the worship, prayer, miracles, signs, and wonders. We express the love of God by loving him and one another through the pursuit of God's given destiny. We are committed to serving God with excellence through our God-given gifts. So this is a church where if you want to serve God, you are more than welcome to do that because we are a service-oriented church. What I just read to you this morning, we have it in a small bookmark. I trust that the ushers will have access to it. If you want to have it this morning, they can give you one. So we want to welcome those of us who are worshiping with us for the very first time in Royal House. If this is your first time worshiping with us on a Sunday service, both online or in person, I'd like you to just indicate by raising up your hand. Your very first time in this. Oh, hallelujah. Please, can you stand up for recognition, please? God bless you. Uh, we are so excited to have you here this morning. Um, the ushers will be handing over to you a simple form just to gather some data from you so that we're able to reach out to you and get to know you better. In Royal House, you are only a guest once and you are family afterwards. So we look forward to extending our hand of fellowship to you. Our services, just like you have come in this morning on Sunday, we have two services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in between the Sunday school. On Wednesday, we have our intercessory prayer session, 7 p.m. And on Fridays, we have our Bible study, 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you once and again. And God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Father, we bless you, Lord. Open your mouth and give him all the glory. Open your mouth and worship him. He deserves all his, all your, all his glory. Father, you deserve all the glory. We we'll worship you this morning. We we'll bless you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy, O oh Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Father, for another time in your presence, O oh Lord. We bless you, Lord Father. We worship and we adore you. We lift up ourselves before your throne, O oh Lord Father, that as we have come to receive from you, O oh Lord Father, we will not go back the same way. You will minister life unto us, O oh Lord, and our lives will never remain the same. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Thank you, Royal Voices. And let's put our hands together for Royal Voices. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. And I welcome as many as are watching online. The Lord bless you. And for those of us in person, the Lord bless us in Jesus' name.
The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord has been good to us. And we thank God for his faithfulness. I just want to thank God for the privilege to stand before you this morning to bring the word of the Lord. Uh, I give him all the glory. I give him all the praise. And in, in absentia, thanking the set man in the house. We pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen him in Jesus' name. My prayer this morning is as this word come forth, it will mix with faith in you, in me, and it will bring forth good results in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. As we go into your word, Holy Spirit, you will speak unto us. We're here to receive from you, O Lord Father. We ask you to speak unto us, O Lord Father. Minister lives unto us, O Lord, that Lord, no one, none of us, O Lord, will go back the same way. Bless us, O Lord, Father. Let there be transformation. Let there be healing. Let there be miracles. Let there be wonders, O Lord, Father. Let there be salvation of souls in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We ask you, Lord, Father, to have your way as your work go forth. And Father, at the end, O Lord, you alone will receive all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. And if we continue, the Bible keeps on telling us the different times that we have. As children of God and as a believer, we need to have understanding of the time and season that we are. It's very crucial. To have dominion. The Bible says it created us to have dominion. To have this dominion. To be in control. To fulfill God's plan for our lives. To know what to do. And not to miss out of God's promises that he has for us. We need to know the time and the season. We need to have the understanding of the time and the season. There's a group of people the Bible talks about in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says, and of the children of Issachar, who had understanding of times, to know what Israel ought to do, their ships were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. They were not just living anyhow. They, they were living their lives by understanding the time and the season that they are in. And that is the same thing for us as children of God. As daughters and as sons of God, we are not to live our lives anyhow. We are to live our lives according to the time and season, by the understanding of the time and season that we are in. Thank God for this year, 2024, is our year of deeper work with God. And this month is our month of prayer and consecration. In order not to miss out of what God has in store for us this year and also this month. And in order for us to know what to do, not to be in ignorance. According to Hosea 4, 6, that says, my people are destroyed for lack of ignorance. For us not to live in ignorance, we need to have the understanding of the time and season. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, So that no advantage will be taken of us by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. We are not to be ignorant of the time and season. Not to let the devil take advantage of us. When we walk in ignorance and we don't know the time and season that we're in, the devil will take advantage. My prayer this morning is that we will not be ignorant and the devil will not take advantage of us in Jesus' name. As a church, we are in the season of focusing on the presence of God. Leaning more into the presence of God is a season of going deeper in the things of God. And pastor has, has been teaching us, last month was our month of revelation and knowledge of his word. And we learned through the word of God and through the servant, through his servant, that we need to have rema 
for every aspect of our life. We cannot just live anyhow. We need to have Rema. We need Rema for every aspect of our lives. And we are encouraged to pray for the grace to receive the Rema. And this month is our month of prayer and concentration and consecration. And we have been, and the Lord has been teaching us on building a personal altar. That is a time to be with him in prayer. We've learned about the time of the word in January. That is just a time for us. If we really want to walk deeper with him this year, two things that cannot, we cannot just trade in, as in we cannot exchange it with anything, word and prayer. Receiving the Rema word from his throne, living our lives by the Rema word, and also spending time in prayer by building our personal prayer altar. And that is what the Lord has been teaching us. And as a church, we've been praying every day. Last year, we were praying for half an hour, 6 to 6.30. And because we want to go to a deeper realm, you know, God calling us to a deeper walk. We've been working with him. But God is saying, we have to do more. It's time to get to the deep. To leave the shallow end and go to the deep. The Bible said the deep collect unto the deep. So God is saying, you know what, my children, it's time for you to come up. Zion is calling us to a higher place of calling. And we have been praying every hour, six to six, uh, six to seven. And all these things I've said, all this focus, I mean the focus of all this is just for us to experience the presence of God, to have a deeper walk with God. And today the message is just to add to what we have been learning. It's one of the key things that we need if we really want to have a deeper walk with God. And if we want to live a life of prayer and consecration. So this morning I'm going to add line upon line, precept upon precept. According to the word of God in Isaiah 28 uh, verse 13. To build on what we have been taught. And for me personally since the beginning of the year, something that I've been like seeking God's face for that. Okay, God, you are calling me into a deeper work with you. What else do I need to do? What else do you want me to do more? And this is an area that the Lord has opened my eyes to in a new dimension. And my prayer this morning as we go through it, the Holy Spirit will minister to us in Jesus' name. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to be sharing with us on the topic of the word the presence of God. The presence of God is key for us to walk, to go into a deeper walk with him. We cannot afford not to be in his presence. Personally, for the last few years, for me, I've seen it as a spiritual strainer. What do I mean by that? For those of us that cook, strainer is one of the kitchen tools that is used to separate liquid and solid. And that means it has been a time whereby the spiritually solid people have been separated from the spiritually liquid one. What do I mean? The time the men are separated from the body. The time to leave the surface and go into the deep. And research has shown recently well, it might not really be said recently, but from research I've found that vast majority of believers, they only read their Bible and pray during a church service like this. Hmm. Hallelujah. That is, most believers, we only read our Bible and we only pray in a church service like this. When we say, okay, let's open to the book of Matthew, okay, let's be on our feet and let's pray. So if church service is the only place and the only time believers, children of God, are reading their Bible and praying and seeking after the presence of God, we'll see why there is a spiritual decay and deterioration happening in our society, in our nation. You see why God is calling us and say, you know what, we have to leave that realm. We have to get into a deeper walk with him. For us to see changes, for us to take dominion, 
For us to go to that level of deeper work with him, we need to constantly stay in his presence. There's some key things I want us to know in his presence and I want us to take note of this and if you are writing, please write this down. God's presence is where we ought to be, is our spiritual position. There is no other place for us to be. God's presence is where we ought to be. The price of God's presence is not cheap. Yes, is where we ought to be, is where he has created us to be, is where he desired that we, will, we should be. We can even see it in the book of Genesis that the Bible says in the evening he will come and spend time with Adam and Eve. So God's presence is, God's presence is where we ought to be. The price of God's presence is not cheap. God's presence cannot be ascertained through a drive through experience. It's not where you just go in and out. Today you feel like going there, you go there. You know, it's, not like it. it's not like Timothy's, it's not like Starbucks, that today you feel like, okay, let me do a drive through It's not ascertained through a drive through experience. It's not just where you just dash in and out. It's not where you go to whenever you feel like that. You know what I feel like going, okay, let me go. God's presence is not something that can be seasoned upon your life, that you can season upon your life. Like something like a seasoning salt. It's not something that you just season. It's not on the surface. It's not something that you can just season on top of your life as just a seasoning. As in part of death. It's not, uh, how, what another word can I use? It's not part of what you use as your decoration. God's presence is costly because God's presence is priceless. God's presence is costly because it's priceless. Because the things that you get in the presence of God, money cannot buy. By the time you spend that time in his presence, what you receive, money cannot buy. Hallelujah. God's presence has a price and also has a promise. The presence of God has a price and also it has a promise. So this morning we want to learn more. We want to learn more about the presence of God. We need to understand that if we truly, like I, I'm repeating again, we truly want to have a deeper work. We truly want to walk deeper with the Almighty this year. We must be ready to pay the price of staying in God's presence. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He that abideth in the presence of the He that abideth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, sorry, shall abide under the presence. Hallelujah. For you to experience the presence of God. It must be a time that you have spent with him. You must have spent a quality time with the Almighty. I just read somewhere to us right now. That is the Bible says, for us to dwell in the secret place of the Most High and to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, it has to be in the presence of God. Before this can happen in our life, we need to must have and we must be ready to pay the price of God's presence. And it's not what we joke with. But let's look, quickly look into the word of God and look at what the word of God says about God's presence. I told us God's presence is not cheap. Hallelujah. And what we get when we spend time in his presence, money cannot buy. But let's see some example of people that experience 
that have experience of this that we're talking about and what they have and what the word of God has to say. God's presence is also a gift for us to know. It's a gift that he has given unto us. But it comes with a price. We have something to do. We have a role to play. Let's open our Bible to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. If we read from verse 12, we're not going to read everything, but from verse 12 to verse 23. Moses had understanding of the presence of God. And he said in verse 12, then Moses said to the Lord, Let's go, to verse, uh, let's go to verse 14. We can read verse 12 to 23 when we get home. But let's read verse 14. The Bible says, and he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said unto him in verse 15, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up here. This is somebody that have the understanding of God's presence. Moses specifically asks for the presence of God because he has understanding of what the presence of God is. Moses knew that they would be defeated. They would fail. They would be prey to the enemy if the presence of God does not go with, with them. Moses asked for the presence of God before embarking on that journey. What project are we to embark on? What are we doing in our lives? We need the presence of God. In every area of our lives, we need God's presence. This is something that we need to ask for. And this is where we ought to be to receive instruction for the next level. To receive instruction for what we ought to do. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forever. You experience the joy of the Lord. In his presence. Unquantifiable joy is in God's presence. Psalm 145, verse 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. And we can also read Acts chapter 3 from verse 21 to 20, from verse 20 to 21. It talks about time of refreshing in his presence. You want to be refreshed. The Bible says the time of refreshing comes from God's presence. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 talks about us receiving mercy and grace for help in time of need in God's presence. We can all get all this in God's presence. And Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 and Isaiah 43 verse 2 talks about God's promises, God's promises of his presence. We can read that when we get home. So when we say we want the presence of God, we are saying we want something costly. What we are saying is we want something that comes with a price and that we're ready to pay the price. I want you to ask your friend, ask your neighbor on the right and on the left, are you ready to pay the price? We want to look into the Bible and look into a case study of somebody that has understanding of God's presence and what he did, the price that he paid. This is somebody that had understanding of God's presence and he paid the price. And it's the same price that as believers we ought to pay to enjoy the presence of God. Let's open our Bible to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15, I'm going to start from verse 1. And we'll quickly read. This chapter before we read, this chapter gives us a framework of, of understanding God's presence and the price that this king paid because this king had understanding of God's presence. The Bible says, 
Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time Israel has been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. But when the trouble, but when the trouble, but when in, tr- in their trouble, they turned to the Lord, God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. Verse 5 said, and in those times, there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in. But great tumult, was, great tumult was on all the inhabitants of the land. So nations was destroyed by nations and city by city. But God troubled them with every adversity. Verse 7 says, but you be strong and do not let your hand be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Verse 8 continue reading about what he did. But let me just put a pause here. And give us an understanding before we go to verse 8. And we'll start reading of the price that King Asa paid for God's presence. Because he had understanding. But let's look at his understanding of God's presence. Because for him, when we start reading from verse 8, verse 8 talks about the prices that he paid. Which we will look into later. But because of his understanding. And he got his understanding from the book of Leviticus. Let's quickly look at the book of Leviticus, chapter 10. Because after having this encounter, and he wanted to turn the heart of the people to the presence of God. This is the understanding of of what he had about the presence of God. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1. Then Nadab and Habu, the son of Aaron, each took his censer, and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Almighty. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who came near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. King Asa had understanding that for him to bring this heart of people back into the heart of worshiping God for the presence of God, he knew that and he recognized that God is holy. And for you to be near God, you have to be holy. You cannot toil with sin See those two people, the two sons of Aaron. They thought the presence of God is where they can just go to and just do whatever they want. But they offered a profane, the Bible said they offered a profane fire before the Almighty. That is, we cannot come to the presence of God. We sin in our lives. We want the presence of God. We cannot toil with sin. We cannot have it seen in our life. Our God is holy. So with this understanding that King Asa had, that you know what? I cannot tell our sin. There is sin in the land. And if we want the presence of God, we have to deal with sin. We cannot enjoy the presence of God while we are in sin. This is the understanding that I had. And that is why it took action. Back to where we're reading, 2 Chronicles chapter 15. We'll continue from there. Now from verse 8 to 18, describe the action that he took, the price that he paid for God's presence, for the presence of God back into the land. As I understood God's presence, and that the price of God's presence requires change. We want the presence of God, like we read, we cannot have a sin in our life. It requires change. 
Many of us are excited about all the promises of God, but we often neglect and we often forget the price for this promise. Yes, God has so many promises for us in his word, but because we are so excited, sometimes we forget and we neglect the price for these promises. We need to get back to understanding that God requires, that what God requires from us to abide in his presence is that there has to be a change in our life. To enjoy his presence, there has to change, to be a change in our lives. And there's a price that we need to pay for this presence. So quickly, let's look at the price for God's presence. For us to have the presence of God, to enjoy the presence of God, we want to quickly look at the price. From verse 8 to 18, King Asa paid, I will say 10, but we won't have time to look into those 10 prices. Let's just look at few. The first one, we'll be able to see maybe two or three, depending on our time. The first one is in verse 8. The Bible says he removed idols. Verse 8 says, and when Asa heard of this word, that is, he heard of these promises. I mean, he heard of this prophecy. The prophecy of Oded, uh, the prophet, he took courage and removed the abominable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the city, which he has taken in the mountain of Ephraim, and he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. The Bible says, he removed all the idols. That is, he went through the region. He went through the land. I told us there cannot be sin in the camp and we will enjoy the presence of God. He went through the region. He went through the territory. He removed all the idols. The Bible talks about idolatry and it's not only limited to graven image. It's not only limited to status. It's not only limited to idols. Idolatry is about our heart. It's the condition of the heart that exalts creation above the creator. And that is why in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 3, the Bible says, and the Lord says that you shall have no other God before me. When we talk about idols, it's not, a, it's not limited to images. You might be thinking, oh, I don't have any image. I don't have any idol in the house. I don't have anything that I worship that I bow down to every day. But idolatry is about your heart. It's about my heart. It's a condition of our heart that we, when we exalt creation above the creator, Asa King Asa was restoring the heart of the nation to heart of worshiping God. And he went round and he removed all the idols. Now relating to us, what is the idol that you have in your life that is standing between you and the presence of God? For some people, the job is their idol. You work so many hours that you don't even have time for God. You work so many hours, you have so many jobs that you don't have time to stay in his presence. Like I told us, it's not a drive through experience. We cannot, we cannot ascertain the, the presence of God through a drive through For some of us, it might be our job. Working so many hours of the day that we don't even have time to serve God. We don't have time to stay in his presence, to receive instruction of what to do. The Bible said the children of Issachar, they have the understanding of the time that they need to stay in God's presence to receive instruction on what Israel ought to do. No time to spend in his presence, to hear his plan for our life, to get instruction of what to do. We spend so time that we don't even have time to pray. No time for prayer. We are talking about building a personal prayer altar. But many of us, like I said, our idol can be our job that is taking time from us to build that personal altar. No time for Bible study. No time for church service. No time for house fellowship. No time for God. 
no time to even serve God. We've been talking about joining a department, serving God. We're busy. Working so many hours to pay bills. Working so many hours to pay credit cards. The, the idols are what we are purchasing with that money that we receive. It can be the high standard life that we want to live. It can be that car, that kind of car that you just want to drive. And for you to maintain that high standard of life, to live in such house, you must work that numbers of hours. It can be the kind of clothes that you want to wear. Or it can be a kind of wardrobe that you want to maintain. Like I said, the idol is what we are purchasing with the money that we receive. Some people, they are, the idol can be, the, it can be relationships. It can be the kind of friends they're keeping that is taking them out of the will of God. That is not even encouraging them to serve the law. That is, they listen to is the one dictating their life. They just want to belong. They want to please that friend. You can be in relationship in another way. Maybe you are tired of being single. You are tired of the, I mean, of the single, of the single season that you are in. And you start compromising. Some people, the idol can be the money. That is, they find it difficult to give, to pay tight, to give a quality seed. The Bible says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. It's a commandment from the Almighty. It's not negotiable. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Many of us, the money, releasing, is difficult for us to release. Like I said, the idolatry is a position of our heart, is a condition of our heart. That you feel that I need to pay my bills first. My bills comes before God. What else did, uh, did King Asa did? Number one, we said he removed all the idol. And the same thing that we need to do to remove the idol. Whatever is standing before between us and the presence of God, we need to remove it. You know what is standing between you and the presence of God. When last did you enjoy the presence of God? When last can you say you've been in the presence of God? Do you really have that experience of the presence of God? What idol is standing between you and the presence of God that you have to remove? The next thing he did, in verse 8, the B part, the Bible says, And he restored the altar of the Lord that was before. Another version says it repaired the altar. You don't need to repair anything unless it's damaged. The Bible says it repaired the altar. That means the altar is damaged. The altar is where they go to to repent for their sin. That is where they make their sacrifice. That is where they repent of all the sin. That is where they worship God. That is where they make sacrifices of repentance of their sin. But after they get so comfortable in living a lifestyle of sin that they allow the enemy to take them away, they stop going to the altar. Normally, there is always a priest in this alt at this altar 24-7, 365 days. There's always an, a priest there at the altar. But because they stop going to the altar, the altar now fell into a state of neglect. The physical state of the altar which is damage, represent the spiritual state of the people. Because they were no longer going there. You know, they, they're so comfortable in the life of, the, the lifestyle they're living, the sin, the lifestyle of sin they were living. They were no longer going to the altar. And there was no longer priest there. Because the priest that was, should be attending to the altar was no longer there because nobody was showing up anymore. Everybody was comfortable in their lifestyle of sin. And the altar fell into a state of neglect. And that represents the spiritual state of the people. But what did Asa did? Asa repaired the altar, signifying that he's returning the heart of the people back to the heart of worshiping the Lord. Now back to us again. How do we relate with this? 
Some of us get so comfortable with sin or sin around us. We get so comfortable sitting in where the gossip is going on, where, where people are backbiting or where they're participating in it. We get so f- comfortable living a life of fornication, a life of adultery, unforgiveness, hatred. The lifestyle of lying. And sometimes it takes us days and months, even years, before we repent. All we do is we give excuses. We give a reason why we acted that way because the other way acted this way. We give a reason saying it's not our fault. God understands. The same thing was happening to those people, to the children of Israel. They get so comfortable in that lifestyle of sin that they stop going to the altar. They stop going to the altar to offer their sacrifices of of, of repentance. You don't feel God's presence because your heart is filled with unholiness, unrighteousness. We need to repair the altar of repentance in our heart if we want to experience the presence of God. Repairing the altar of repentance means we are in a continual state of going before God with a broken and a contrite heart, not justifying our action. That is continuously we go before him with a broken and with a contrite heart. That means we're before God. Whenever we do something, we're easy, I mean, quickly we repent of that sin. We don't give excuse. Easily we can say, Lord, I'm sorry for how I spoke or how I treated that sister or that brother. But we're not giving excuses that boy reacted to me that way or he spoke to me that way. We're not full of ourselves. The altar of repentance represents humility in our life that we're able to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves and go before him. Humble ourselves to repent of whatever we have done. Humble ourselves before the Almighty. So my question, or my challenge to us this morning is that what do we need to repent of? What lifestyle are we living that is hindering us from the presence of God? The lifestyle those people were living is a lifestyle of sin. And that hinders them from enjoying or staying in the presence of God. The next thing he did in verse 16. Let's go to verse 16. The Bible says, Also he removed Maka, the mother of Asas the king, from being, the queen, from being queen's mother because he had made an obscene image of Asherah and Asha and Asa cut down a obscene image and crushed and burnt it and burnt it by the brook Kidron. The next thing he did, he removed the grandmother. The Bible says another version says he deposed his grandmother. If we have to be honest with ourselves, many of us will not do this. He removed his grandmother from that position because the grandmother was not living a lifestyle that glorified God. What we would do, we would shy away. We would pretend as if we didn't see it. We would always give a reason because the person is so close to us. I said demonstrated to us that the price of God's presence requires being willing to offend those that we love. That is sometimes for you to experience the presence of God. For you to experience the presence of God, it might require you to offend those that you love so that you don't offend the one that you serve. That is what he demonstrated here for us. He demonstrated here for us 
that the price of God's presence, sometimes the price we need to pay to enjoy, to experience the presence of God is that we are willing to offend those that we love so that we don't offend the one that we serve. But how many of us can do that? Sometimes we are in a relationship with people that are not pursuing God's uh, that not pursuing God, we don't have the same, uh, the same goal in life. We are not on the same page when it comes to the things of God. God is not priority in their lives. They question our service. They question what, why we do all those things. Sometimes they're even tolerating us serving God. Those are people that we need to prayerfully depose. That is, remove. We need to know that people in our life, people that are around us, create the atmosphere of our worship. So we have to be very careful who we surround ourselves with. Your parents, your cousins, your uncles, your brothers, your best friend may mean so much to you. But if, if they are not pursuing the presence of God, not regarding the one and the true living God that we serve as holy. I promise you, they are influencing you. You just don't know. If you have those people around you that they're not serving God, they're not pursuing God, their priority is not God, and you are still comfortable living around them, you are still comfortable doing what, I mean, you are still comfortable with them being around you. I guarantee you, you are compromising one way or the other. You just don't know. So if you really want the presence of God, sometimes it might mean to you that you have to break some fellowship, some relationship. You have to offend some people. They might be so close to you, but this is what this, what this king, King Asher did. Because of the value of the presence of God, I did not want to joke with. He had to offend some people. He offended his mother-in-law. I mean, his grandmother. No mother-in-law, grandmother. He had to remove. Are we ready to do that? Look into your life. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are the people around you? Can you boldly say you can break those relationships? Can you boldly say you can break away from such fellowship? The, price, the presence of God is not cheap. The presence of God has a price. We must be ready to pay the price. We read an example here of this king. Because he was bringing the heart of those people back to the heart of worshiping God. They wanted the presence of God like never before. And he did this. You remove all the idol. What is the idol in our heart? What is standing between us and God? Is it our job? Is it our career? Our business? Is it our relationship? The Bible says he restored the altar. That is, he repaired the altar. Do we easily ask for forgiveness? Or we justify the reason? Or we feel comfortable living that lifestyle of sin? We need to be in that. We need to create an atmosphere around us that we continuously go to God with a broken and a contrite heart. That is, easily we realize what we have done and go before him to repent. And we must be ready to break, to remove ourselves from some relationships. It can be as close as this, you know, his grandmother. We must be ready to break some relationship. We must be ready to break some fellowship. If we really want the presence of God. I told us the presence of God has a price, but it also has a promise. Are we willing to pay the price? In this month of prayer and consecration, we want to build a personal altar. 
We want the presence of God like never before. Because that is what can take us into this deeper walk that God is calling us into. It's not something we can get through a drive-through experience. Is our spiritual position is where we need to be at all times. Can you and can me, can we all boldly say we are in the presence of God? We want to see a change in this land. As a church, we need the presence of God. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. I just want you to talk to God. We just, the Lord just ministered to us about his presence, the presence of God. This is where we ought to be. This is our spiritual position. And we've known that it's not something that we can just get through a drive through experience. I want you to commit yourself into the hands of the Almighty. What is it that is hindering you from the presence of God? Moses knew the importance of the presence of God and he said, Father, we will not go if you will not go with us. We need the presence of God in our relationship with God. But it comes with a price. It's not cheap. The presence of God is costly, but it's priceless. Because what we get from his presence, money cannot buy. I want you to commit yourself into the hands of God. You need the presence of God. I need the presence of God as a church. We need the presence of God. But we have to be able to pay the price. To remove every idol. What is it that we are exalting? What is the creation that we are exalting above the creator in our heart? Idolatry is about our heart. What do you run to? Where do you turn to? Do you turn to God? Or you run to something else? That can be your idol. I want you to commit yourself before the Almighty. And for us to experience His presence, we need to continuously go before Him with a broken and a contrite heart. Not living a lifestyle of sin. Repenting whenever we find ourselves in an error. Not justifying ourselves. Not giving excuses. Not giving reasons. And is there any relationship? Is there any fellowship? Is there any relationship that you find yourself in that is hindering you from the presence of God? We must be ready to pay the price to break some relationship. Even though they're so close to us. That is what King Asa demonstrated. That we must be willing to break some relationship. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh Lord, Father. Thank you for your word that you have brought to us, O oh Lord. Reminding us, O oh Lord, that your presence is where we ought to be. Is our spiritual position, O oh Lord, Father. Thank you, Lord Father, for reminding us this morning again that we need to be in your presence at all times. It's our spiritual position that where you want us to be. We thank you, O Lord Father, for reminding us again, O Lord Father, that your presence, O Lord Father, is priceless. Thank you because what we get in your presence, money cannot buy. Thank you because, oh Lord, your presence has a price and also a promise. Lord, we lift up ourselves before your throne. That, Lord, you will help us to cultivate, oh Lord, your presence in every area of our lives, oh Lord. We lift up ourselves before you, Lord, in whatever way, oh Lord, Father, whatever idol, that is hindering us from your presence, O oh Lord Father. We remove, O oh Lord Father. We ask you, Lord, to help us, O oh Lord. And in whatever relationship we find ourselves, O oh Lord Father, that is hindering us, we receive the grace, O oh Lord Father, to separate, O oh Lord Father, to severe that relationship, O oh Lord. We receive the grace from your throne. 
And we say, Lord, you will help us, O oh Lord. In this year, as you call us into a level of deeper work with you, O oh Lord, we need your presence. And we ask you, O oh Lord, to help us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And paraventure, you are here this morning. You might be wondering, how do I have this relationship with this Almighty? How do I have a deeper work with God? And how do I have this presence? You can only have this presence when you have a relationship with the Almighty. If you don't have the relationship with Almighty, this is another opportunity for you this morning to receive him into your life as your Lord and Savior. Is there anyone here this morning and say, Father, I need your presence, but I need to have a relationship with you. Is there anyone, all heads bow, all eyes closed, please. Is there anyone here this morning that wants to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior? That is the first thing you need before you can have the experience of his presence. Is there anybody here this morning? And you are saying, Lord, come into my life. I need your presence, but I need you in my life. I want you to accept, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. Can you signify by raising up your hands? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O Lord. We worship and we adore you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We lift up ourselves before your throne one more time. And we pray, Lord, that you will help us. As we seek your presence, O Lord, Father. And as we dwell in your presence daily, O Lord, we receive grace for this deeper work with you. We receive grace in this time of prayer of consecration. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You would agree with me that that was a word for the season. I strongly believe that everyone tonight, I mean today, you've received a word that will bring about a change in your life. Many years ago, somebody said something, said God's presence makes a difference. So if you want to experience difference in your life in any area, whether it's in your career, your business, your family, your finances, your health, you must do everything possible to enjoy and walk in his presence. I pray that the word that we have had today will bring forth massive fruits in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. It's offering time. Hallelujah. If you're excited, it's offering time this morning. One of the things that God's servant talked about a while ago was, you know, sometimes some of us, maybe, you know, some of us or many of us, uh, we want to give, but we struggle because we don't understand that whatever we've, we have been given, it is the Lord who has given it to us. You know, and the only way up is when you give. So I'd like us to look at the book of Luke 6 and verse 38. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. So you must do what you must give for you to get. And good measure, pressed down and shaking together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you met, with us shall it be measured to you again. Every time we give in the house of God or we give to the Lord or to the kingdom, it's for our own advancement. Because it is God who can only what multiply the seed that is in your hand. It is him that can also preserve it. So this morning I would like to encourage us that we should give to the Lord according to the blessings of God upon our lives. There are so many ways you can give this morning in front of you. There is a pocket in the seat in front of you. There are envelopes there for those who want to give cash. For those who want to give online electronically, you have access to various information to do that. Um, it's on the screen. You can give by Interact. You can give by text to give. Whichever way you want to give this morning, it's, it's acceptable. 
If you have done that, if you have packaged your offering this morning, if you have used the envelope or whatever measure, I'd like us to stand to our feet this morning. Stand to your feet this morning. One of the things that you don't want to do is when you give, you must give your, your seed a voice. I don't know what you are trusting or believing God for this morning, but the seed in your hand can be a voice to access the throne room of grace so that his presence would come upon you and your family and intervene in that particular situation. So I'd like you this morning to begin to speak to your seed and begin to specifically talk to the almighty God, asking him that, Lord, concerning this seed they have given to me this morning, I come to you with joy in my heart and I ask, oh God of heaven, that in this area or that area, Lord, I ask for your intervention. This is just a token of my love for you, O Lord. And I ask that you will show up for me in the mighty name. We just begin to speak to our offering this morning. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you for this opportunity to sow this seed this morning. We ask, O Lord, God of heaven, O Lord, that you will open the heavens upon our lives. And by this seed, O Lord, let it be a sacrifice, O Lord, that will provoke, O Lord, our own answers in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. One more thing you're going to do this morning. You are going to give the Lord cheerfully. As a choir minister, I'd like you to dance, to rejoice, and give the Lord your seed with joy this morning. Praise the Lord. Everybody sing. Let's have our seats in God's presence. Indeed, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Information always leads to transformation. So this morning, we'd like you to pay attention to Royal House News Network so that you can hear what has been happening and what is going to be happening in the coming days for us in this church. God bless you as you, as you pay attention. <laughs> Good morning, Royal House. Welcome to our celebration service. My name is Fasal Dinton with the Royal News Network. Welcome you to church this blessed Sunday morning. Blessed people, we are in our month of prayer and consecration. I pray that in this month, may you be deeply consecrated in your prayer life. In Jesus' name. Once again, my name is Fasal Dinton, and these are your morning announcements.
somebody just bless the name of the Lord? Hello, blessed people. This is just an announcement to let you know that to receive your 2023 donation receipts, we will be doing so electronically this year. To update and or indicate your method of receiving your tax receipt, please send an email to finance at rccgroyalhouse.com. That is finance at rccgroyalhouse.com with your full name before February 19th. To all those who registered for Equip School, please be on the lookout for when classes will resume. But registration for the winter semester has closed, so be on the lookout for the next semester's registration, which will be for the fall, on the Royal House app. Thanks and God bless. Hi, my name is Eniola, the leader of the Young Adults of Royal House. And I'm Fermi, the Vice President of the Young Adults. Now, I know you've been seeing a lot of videos about our place, and you might be wondering, what's the hype all about? Well, we're here to talk about that today. Every year, the young adults of Royal House gather for a three-day conference titled Our Blaze. Here, we spend time in worship, in prayer, and the Word. And this year, is going to be a little bit different because we're partnering with the young professionals of Royal House. The theme for this year's Our Blaze is... Rooted! And our anchor scripture is Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, which says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. We are fully persuaded that this year God is calling us to a deeper walk, for we the remnant must take roots downwards. And now, let's talk about the merch for this year. We'll be taking others today at the back of the church. And we hope to see you there. To all the young adults and young professionals in the house, we will be having an ablaze video on Friday, February 23rd at 10 p.m. in preparation for our forthcoming conference. This video will be happening here in church as we come to pray and seek the face of the Lord. God bless you as you do so and hope to see you there. Hey Soterra Young Professionals, are you excited for your first hangout of the year? We have the privilege of having our very own Pastor Dio Adeyamo coming to talk to us about setting goals. This hangout will be happening here in church February 18th at 7 p.m. Don't miss out on this time to gain knowledgeable advice. Blessed people, this is just a reminder that our 50-day prayer and fasting is still ongoing. Please make sure that you are diligently participating and God will continue to bless you and build your prayer life as you do so in Jesus' name. Once again, my name is Fasai Odunta with the Royal News Network, reminding you that our daily 365 Power Hour prayer is still ongoing. You can join on Zoom from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. God bless you as you do so. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Royal House TV and follow all our social media handles at RCCG Royal House. Thanks for being here this lovely Sunday morning and have a blessed week ahead. Worshiping with, with uh, for worshiping for the first time, can you signify by raising up your hand? Hallelujah! Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. You are going to do one more thing for us. Please bring your bag, your Bible, whatever you have come up, we've come to church with, and just come and join me at the altar here. Ushers will help us. Hallelujah! Let's keep on clapping. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. We just want to tell you more about Royal House. We want to give you our Royal House Hospitality. So bring your Bible, your bag, whatever you have come with. Just come and join me here. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's keep on clapping. Let's keep on clapping. Let's keep on clapping. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Did I, I think. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank you for coming and we trust God that the Lord will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. Royal House, let's stretch forth our hands towards them and pray for them. That the Lord has brought them, the Lord will perfect all that concerns them in Jesus' name. Grant them their heart desire, establish them in his own way in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your children that you have brought into the house today. We appreciate you and we say, Father, as we have prayed, you will perfect all that concerns them. You will establish them. You will grant them their heart desire. You will minister unto them, O Lord, and your name will be glorified. Thank you, Lord, Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Once again, we welcome you to Royal House. Our sister is here. She'll take you to our hospitality room just to welcome you and to tell you more about Royal House. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together as we go to the hospitality room. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. I'm sure we're not tired, Royal House. Let's keep clapping. The Lord has brought them, and we thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Let's be on our feet as we pray. I want you to thank God for how he has blessed you this morning. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. Father, we thank you for this first service. Thank you for how you have ministered unto us through your word and through the worship. We bless you. We worship you. We give you all the glory as we continue into our Sunday school. And the second service, we ask you to take absolute control. Let your name be glorified. Thank you for this week, O Lord. We decree this week a victorious week, O Lord, Father, that we're blessing our going out and that we're blessing our coming in. And Father, we bless you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless us all in Jesus' name. Sunday school starts now. Hallelujah.